in our own country, we find people clinging stubbornly to their own pride-filled ideas about marriage, about scripture interpretation, and about religious freedom. No one willing to give an inch. A stubborn pride that plays out within our churches, our schools, our workplace, and within our families. No one, it would seem, is exempt from the effects of the Zacks-like pride that infects our world. In this morning's gospel reading, Jesus told his own story about the power of pride and its effects on family relationships. The younger son in the story wanted his inheritance early, which was his way of saying that as far as he was concerned, his father was dead. The boy wanted his independence. His pride convinced him that he didn't need anyone, including his family, to find his way in the world. He could make it on his own. But the world offered up a heavy dose of reality, and before long, he began to yearn for the home life, which not long ago he had disdained. You have to wonder how many times he had thought about going home before he actually made the decision to do it. How many times his pride had prevented him from returning to the security and love of his family. But eventually, he swallowed his pride and he made his way back home. Then we encounter the Father's grace, a grace that did not punish the Son or put him to work, a grace that never communicated a message of, I told you so, a grace that instead threw a party for the Son, a grace that celebrated his homecoming. And finally, we get a peek at the older brother's pride kicking in. A pride that did say, I told you so. An accusing pride that condemned the younger son for his actions and the father for his grace. A pride that kept score and would no doubt affect family dynamics for years to come. This sort of pride, this Zax-like, unyielding, self-centered pride destroys. When people get caught up in their pride, determined to stand up for their moral principles, when in fact they are clinging to their own personal prejudices, they have become enslaved. They are enslaved by their narrow-mindedness and blinded by their bigotry. I find it interesting that neither Jesus nor Dr. Seuss chose to bring their stories to a happily ever after conclusion. The light in Jesus's parable fades out on the older son's resentment for the younger son. And Dr. Seuss's fable ends with the two Zaxes, stubborn as ever, clinging to their principles and refusing to budge. Both storytellers leave the ending up to us. It's our choice. We can dig in our heels and refuse to budge. Or we can stop looking at the other as the opposition and realize that they are also Zaxes. They are not an other, but they are an us. We can dig in our heels and things will continue the way they always have, or things can change. And I believe that we are invited to be agents of change, participants in a new world order. But there's something else that I find interesting about the stories, and that is that the world goes on. The older son can throw his temper tantrum if he likes, but it doesn't change things. The celebration continues and the father gives no indication that he, the father, will change his attitude toward the prodigal son. 
And although the two Zaxes foolishly refused to give an inch toward any sort of compromise, eventually the world gets tired of their conflict and it builds bridges and highway bypasses around them. And so it is with our own world. There exist within our, our world people who refuse to budge when it comes to the civil and religious rights of others, such as the LGBT population or members of the Muslim community. And although these people may dig in their heels, I believe the world will eventually move on despite their protests. I believe that because I believe God is on the side of justice. And I believe that justice and equality are stronger than the prejudice and bigotry that stem from fear. Within these stories, within Dr. Seuss's Zach's and Jesus's prodigal son, we get a glimpse at the destructive nature of pride. We see how it poisons our minds and withers our souls. But it doesn't have to be that way. And so we are invited to become agents of change, doing our own part and bringing about the dominion of God on earth. May we embrace these fundamental ideals which teach us to let go of our pride when it becomes a roadblock in our lives. And may God bless us as we do. Amen.